Panasonic FH25 versus iPhone SE Original Edition. In this video, I'm going to compare these two cameras, the Panasonic FH25 and the iPhone SE. Now, these cameras are fairly retro cameras by now. We've got the uh, Panasonic FH25, which is a camera from 2011. It has a 16 megapixel CCD sensor. Whereas we've got the iPhone SE from 2016, which has a slightly smaller sensor than the FH25 and it's only 12 megapixels. Which one of these is better for photography? I've put it to scale diagram on screen showing the sizes of the sensors of these two cameras along with a micro four thirds sensor so you can see exactly what's going on. To test these cameras and pit them against each other, I'm gonna put them under four different tests. The first is a normal range test or how much resolution or image quality you get at a normal range. The second test is a macro test or at minimum focusing distance. The third test is a video test where I'm gonna take video of a still subject and check the image quality. And the final test is just a general usability test. Which camera is more usable? Test number one is the normal distance test. Now for this test, I basically took a picture of a bill of money at the same distance with each camera mounted on a tripod. And I blew up the center of the image to test which camera had better image quality. Now you might think that this kind of test of the image quality doesn't make much of a difference, but for these cameras that are, that are fairly old, the image quality differences between these two cameras actually will make a difference between how they perform in the field or in real life. On the screen, I put up the test results from test one. The Panasonic FH25 is on the left and the iPhone SE is on the right. Now you can see from these results that the Panasonic FH25 does a much better job than the iPhone SE. I can see that the text and the image are both much clearer on the Panasonic FH25. In fact, already on the iPhone SE, I can barely read the number at the bottom of the bill, whereas the number is fairly clear on the Panasonic FH25. So in terms of pure image quality at normal differences, the Panasonic FH25 does a much better job than the iPhone SE. And I will say that I took these shots at the widest focal length for each, 28 millimeters. I forgot to say that earlier. And I did this because both these cameras perform best at their widest focal length. In fact, I didn't test these cameras at all zoomed in because the image quality when you zoom in with both of these cameras is just so bad that I would simply never use it in the field. Just for fun, I also put the Panasonic FH25 against the Panasonic G9, which is a micro four thirds camera with the Olympus 12 to 45 F4 Pro lens. And I set that at 14 millimeters, so the same field of view as the Panasonic FH25. And you can see that although the Panasonic FH25 was good and it did beat the iPhone, the micro four thirds sensor of the G9 and a larger lens clearly does a much better job. You could even read the text under the signatures, but that's not part of this test. It's just for fun to show you what you can get with a modern camera. Still, the FH25 doesn't do too bad of a job. Okay, so it looks like for test one, the Panasonic FH25 beat the iPhone. Now, that means for purely photographic purposes, the FH25 does do a much better job. I was actually kind of surprised by this because, you know, the iPhone is actually four years or even five years newer than the Panasonic FH25, and yet the iPhone is clearly worse. So that's cool. But now onto test two is the macro test. Now I took both of these cameras and focused on the money at the closest range they could focus possible, so pseudo macro distances. Will the Panasonic FH25 still beat the iPhone? Let's see. On screen, we have the results again. The Panasonic FH25 again on the left and the iPhone SE original edition on the right. And you can see that both cameras do a pretty decent job at getting some detail on the spill. However, the Panasonic FH25 still does a much better job than the iPhone SE. And actually, uh, the iPhone SE is a little bit disadvantaged here in multiple ways. Not only is the image quality apparently much worse from test one, but it also has not a close minimum focus distance as the Panasonic FH25. So the iPhone SE is gonna be a little worse just based on that. And also the iPhone SE is only 12 megapixels, whereas you got 16 megapixels for the Panasonic FH25. And so in short, the Panasonic FH25 actually does a pretty good job at macro or pseudo macro photography compared to the iPhone SE. And in general, the FH25 is pretty decent at the pseudo macro distance. And there you have it. At macro distances, the Panasonic FH25 
does a better job than the iPhone SE original edition. So I think from these two tests, we can conclude that the Panasonic FH25 is in general a better photographic tool. But the testing isn't over. What about video? On screen again, I've got the Panasonic FH25 video and the iPhone SE. Now, from this test, unlike the past two tests, the iPhone SE does a much better job at video than the Panasonic FH25. And that's because of a few factors. The FH25 only records 720p video and probably doesn't use a very high bitrate codec to do so, whereas the iPhone SE records 4K video and even downscaled the 720p. The iPhone footage looks a lot better. And I think this is a general trend of cameras in that era that in 2011, cameras just didn't do very good video. And when the iPhone SE came around, uh, the video quality of cameras became much better. Well, that was interesting. The iPhone actually won on one of the tests. So as a video tool, the iPhone SE is a lot better than the Panasonic FH25. And again, that's not too surprising. So for photography, the FH25 is a better tool. And for videography, the iPhone is a better tool. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is usability. Now, the iPhone SE is a phone and it's not too easy to use it for video or photography. But the FH25 is still a pretty easy to use camera and it's got dedicated buttons and stuff. So if I'm going to recommend a camera just to use for photography, the FH25 is actually still a pretty usable camera and it can produce pretty good results if you use it at its widest focal length. So for usability, the FH25 is a lot more usable than the iPhone SE. Conclusion. So I enjoyed doing this test. It was kind of fun to see which of these devices would do a better job at photography and video. I was kind of surprised. I thought the iPhone might have been a little bit better, but actually the quality was still pretty bad, even though these devices have fairly similar sensors. Now, I think this information can actually be kind of practical because, you know, the Panasonic FH25 is a camera that you can get for very cheap on eBay or some other used site. So it could be a really cool photographic tool if you want to experiment with a point and shoot CCD sensor camera. The iPhone SE is also not a bad device for general video and photography, but I wouldn't recommend the iPhone compared to the FH25, not only because of its worst quality, but also because the iPhone, uh, the battery in the iPhone generally in these older models doesn't work so well. The battery in this Panasonic FH25 still kind of works okay. I can still charge it and get a fair amount of use out of it, but the battery in my iPhone SE drains very quickly. And so I don't think it's very usable anymore. So it's not only a worse camera, although it's a decent video tool, it's not very usable simply because its battery runs out very fast. And I think that's a general problem with most of these iPhone SE original models. So that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this retro test and I may be back for more retro tests in the future, maybe if I can find more retro devices to use. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you again next time.